It's been 7 months and we finally have a new jumping check in, let's check it out. 7k dreamer please. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with a new color bot for the first and hopefully not only jumping check-in for 2020. But before we dive right in, let's actually compare and contrast what has changed. At first glance, the new jumping check-in contains way more rare stuff, which is a good thing and it's also a lot more resource focused compared to just throwing players a bunch of selectors. I guess at this stage, resources are definitely much harder to come by, especially power up stones, mythical awakened stones, six star power up crystals, and pet essences. All these are provided in this jumping check-in, so it's definitely gonna make life easier. Of course, with those provisions, there are much fewer hero selectors. We had 6 the previous time, but now we only have 3. There is also a removal of normal accessories and normal pet selectors. Normal accessories are super easy to obtain, so there's no issue there. Removing normal pet selectors could affect slightly because new players shouldn't be pulling for pets. But then again, you really only need Mick, Mo, and Ares, so if you have those, you're good. There is also a reduction in special pet selectors from 3 to 1. This is probably the only problem with the new jumping check-in because as you know special pets are super hard to come by so reducing this is not the most ideal. There is however an inclusion of maxed out PvE items, 8 copies in fact. Previously we had 0. So yes it's great we are getting a balance of PvP and PvE items in the jumping check-in. So without further ado, let's start off with the first week of accessory selectors. I think it's quite strange to put accessory selectors first to be honest because we always had hero selectors in the first week. But anyway, you will be given 2 special accessory selectors and 15 Galidus Isabella accessory selectors. Now if you have watched the volume 5 of my beginner's guide series, you will know why I'm going to make the following choices. For the luxurious special accessory, you should pick 1 Guardian Ring and 1 Willful Ring. The Guardian Ring protects you from any damage for 3 turns and it is used in PvP and even more recently in recent weeks due to tons of heavy damage dealers like <coughs> Milia in Arena, the Willful Ring heals you back to 100% when your HP falls below half and is suited for both PvP and PvE. Honestly, getting just one copy of each or two copies of either isn't gonna help because you need many many copies for your entire Arena team and PvE team eventually. So getting one of each I feel is a decent choice. Now for the 15 Galidus Isabella accessories, do not, I repeat, do not choose one copy of each because this isn't for collection purposes. I strongly suggest getting one and just one Galidus loyalty for a one turn taunt. This will come in handy for accessory rate level 8. Following that, for the next 14, you can split your choices between the Galidus Velocity, Galidus Madness, and Isabella's Illusion. The Galidus Velocity provides your hero with the height effect, Galidus Madness allows you to do additional 5000 fixed damage per skill use, and the Isabella's Illusion allows your hero to attack twice with every basic attack. This is very good for PvE DPSs like Shane and Velika, and occasionally PvP heroes. It's difficult to advise how many copies of each you should choose because you may actually be using all the selectors for just one particular accessory. The reason why you need so many copies of a single accessory is because the accessory upgrading system heavily involves RNG. A single copy doesn't guarantee a definite upgrade. Sometimes it may require anywhere from 10 to 40 copies to fully upgrade an accessory. So it depends on your luck and priorities. If you manage to get a level 4 accessory after upgrading, I would suggest then to change your selection and work on a new accessory because it will take a lot to get to level 5. For the Celestial accessories, these are just tickets. I have reviewed them individually in a separate video so you can check the link above. In week 2, we have PvP and PvE weapons and armor. For new players, if you still do not have 2 maxed out physical speed weapons and 2 maxed out magic speed weapons, then get them from these selectors and you are set for the rest of your 7 nights life. While crit and lethal weapons have more damage value in PvP, you will always be at a disadvantage if you do not have maxed out speed weapons on one hero, because you will never go first in arena. So pick whichever type you lack from these selectors, and if you already have both sets of speed weapons, then go for crit and lethal weapons depending on your arena team. For armor, choose 2 counter and 2 HP. If you already have 2 counter, choose HP for all. For PvE weapons, new players, you guys will need to equip your Velika and Shane, so go for 2 lethal magic boss weapons and 2 lethal physical ones. For PvE armor, pick 2 counter and 2 HP. 
The two counter armor can be used on a small but useful pool of heroes which also includes your DPS as well as Ares, Sig and Aragorn. There are situations where you will need these heroes to counter for efficient battles. If you already have two PvE counter armor then you can choose HP. For returning players and veterans, I think getting more crit and lethal weapons and HP and block armor for PvP would be good, while for PvE, still crit and lethal weapons and HP armor. Or you know, if you have too many items already, you can just sell these for a ton of power-up stones, which can then be used for mythical item polishing. In week 3, there is only one selector and that is your special pet selector. I have a few options here, Kale, Ritual or Yu. Kale and Ritual are both PvE pets and until now still are the best PvE pets. Kale excels in many mid game and end game content but of course it can be used in early game content like Raid. But based on my personal testing, I feel that Ritual is a much better pet for Raid, especially when used with Velika. However, because it is completely possible to get a 5 star Ritual for free just by completing quests, I would suggest picking Kale here if you still do not have him. And if you have both, then Yu is the next most logical pick because he can be awakened and become a very useful pet for PvP. The other pets are hardly ever used with some still waiting for their awakenings to happen. In week 4, we finally get the 3 special hero selectors, so if you already have watched the very very important volume 7 of my beginner's guide series, this table will be very familiar to you. It is basically a chart to show you all the free heroes and hero selectors given to new players for the first 14 days. I made the necessary adjustments as promised all the way up to 26 days and these are the preferred options. The main changes will be getting Yonhee on day 1 instead of Zahara in my original chart. This is because now that hero selectors are only given on day 22, you will need to prioritize your farmer first. Eileen is now set to be gotten on day 8 and is interchangeable with Skull on day 14. This leaves the jumping check-in selections to be Ace, Mist and Ares because of their high utility in PvE. Miz is also a super strong unit in PvP and she's also the latest hero to be added into the selectors when this video was made. If you already have those mentioned, then check if you have those in the yellow box. Of course, this is just a recommendation list and of course, if you already have all the essential heroes, then you can prioritize those which you don't have. I have made other videos on essential special heroes and individual reviews explaining why they are so good. So if you want a deeper understanding, do check out those videos on my channel. For veterans, all these are just duplicates which you can use to sacrifice for the hero sanctum. I will definitely be aiming to get heroes for these three sanctums because the buffs here will be applied to all heroes so they are very beneficial. I have put down the elemental types here so you can decide where to spend your resources. I would definitely try to get more of those offensive heroes since so many are needed. Before we end, I just want to talk about how to wisely use those resources which are given to you for free. On day 7, you are given a legendary substat stone. This item guarantees an upgrade for any accessory, so it should only, only, only be used to upgrade a level 4 accessory to level 5. Period. This is best used for Celestial Accessory substats because they are so rare and hard to come by, but to emphasize again, only level 4 substats. If you are not sure whether to use it, leave a comment below and I can advise you. The Power Up Stones and Mythical Awakening Stones are all for item upgrading, there is no need to restrict usage for these because you can always farm them back. 1000 Mythical Awaken Stones allows you to Mythical Awaken 2 items of your choice. Rubies are used for gacha and costumes, use them sparingly and farm them well. Pet essences and silver and gold tickets are all used for awakened pets. Currently the best pet to work on is Bran and Brawn if you ever get them. And you, otherwise honestly you could just hold on to these because I feel that future awakened pets will just get stronger and stronger and it will be so good to have these on hand especially when they are going to release a game changing PvE awakened pet. Those pet tickets are best used only when you need to upgrade an awakened patch cheer at higher levels. It isn't really worth it to be used at lower levels. Lastly, for power-up crystals, make sure to level each of them up to level 40 before using them as mythical awakening power-up fodder. That's 90 free rubies right there. These 30 crystals will definitely lighten the pressure to obtain 50 in total to make a mythical awakened hero plus 10. Remember, priority is on Velika first. As always, I'm ending off with a newbie chart to make the selections clearer for you. Bear in mind all the advice I have given earlier on because just looking at this chart alone doesn't explain much. Let me know what you think of the new jumping check-in event, is it better or worse in your opinion? Stay tuned for more guides, thank you so much and see you!